Hi, I'm Arius, and today I'm continuing my fastest series to help those of us leveling up a low-level character. One of the biggest challenges continues to be having enough materials to craft better gear and for leveling up your town. In my last two videos in the fastest series, I shared the fastest way to level up your town and fastest way to level up your character. While many found those two videos helpful, my fellow warrior, Babalu, mentioned that the Abyss is a good way to grind for gold, experience, materials, wooden, and gold chests. So if you found that the methods in the previous video, fastest max character level, were too slow or easy, then you'll be happy to know that there's a faster way to do it that requires a bit more work. Basically, don't try this if you're not too comfortable with the game yet, as it may prove to be more frustrating than fun. But by all means, if you're ready for the advanced level grind, keep watching. And make sure you watch the special tip at the end as it may help you survive in the abyss a bit longer. Also don't forget to show some love to that like button, so this video gets out to more people to show them just how cool this game is and just how rad all of you are as a community. So here we go. First things first, before we go into the abyss, we gotta prepare. Craft a set of the highest tier gear you can, all health. Next, craft one extra piece of gear with one of each elemental resistance. I ended up just making a chest piece of each. Fire, shock, frost, and poison, while also having a full health set. Next, craft a weapon for each element if you don't already have one. Use the highest tier weapon you can craft or have enough materials for. Keep in mind, sometimes as a low level player in a big guild with many players, some of their shops may have a weapon you can use that's the highest tier already crafted and it will only cost gold. For me, it's worth it because I spend more time in arena than anywhere else, so I end up having more gold than I really need. It's always materials that I have problems with. Also note that in my last Abyss video, I spelled out exactly what to use and how to fight many of the mobs. I realize now that it's just easier to tell folks to use armor that resists their attacks and weapons that specialize in exploiting their weaknesses. Most mobs are weak to a weapon type and elemental type, while some are only weak to one or the other. Having a weapon that exploits both weaknesses is better, but may take up too much inventory space in the long run. So if you can kill them with only one, that's fine too. Now that we got our gear, let's get to it. Once you're in, note that mobs on each floor will more than likely do the same damage and be weak to the same element. Just pay attention when you engage, because this isn't always true. And the icon above them will tell you what to exploit. Knowing your enemies will help you to prepare for your armor as well. Dremoras do fire damage, wisps do ice, stormatros do shock damage. It's not hard to learn their attack types and how to defend against it. In regards to magic and skills, we'll want absorb, resist elements, and one projectile element spell. Ice spike, fireball, and Lightning Bolt are great examples. Stamina skills you'll need Adrenaline Dodge and your choice of two others depending on your playstyle. The fight will be all about mitigating as much damage while doing as much damage as possible. I'll open with a guard if they swing so I can stun them with my high block. Then use that time to either cast Resist Elements if it's a mage or Absorb if it's a warrior. Then I'll launch into my offense, which consists of always a manual strike, going for crit, followed by a strong damaging type. In my case, I use Skull Crush for the piercing damage. Then, use other skills as they become available, taking care not to stun yourself and also consideration of the situation that you're in. Use the dodge to avoid their strong damaging attack. If all goes well, they should be dead without taking too much damage. Try to keep repeating the same process, the more health you have after every fight, the better chances you have to survive longer in the abyss and get that gold chest. Once you do, start over and do it again. Keep doing this and you'll end up with a lot of experience, a lot of mats, a lot of gold, and a lot of gold chests. Neat. But that's not all. If you stayed up until now, you'll be delighted to know that I have a special tip for you. How do you regenerate your health in the abyss when there's no food? Well, we're already using Adrenaline Dodge and Absorb. If you have the plus healing secondary on your armor pieces, that should help as well. But how can you exploit combat with an enemy to stall and regenerate health? Here's how. If you notice, 
there are some enemies that can engage you even while you're fighting someone else. That's because these monsters don't stop moving when you begin combat with a matching mob type. For example, if you've ever fought a wisp, you'll know how annoying it is to fight three or four of them at the same time. Why are these mobs special? Well, if you can manage to pull one away from the group, you'll notice that they only have one kind of predictable attack pattern. You can't hit them with melee unless they're attacking or had just attacked and you timed it right. Otherwise, these creatures can only be hit with ranged spells. More importantly, you can use their delayed attacks as a chance to recover health. So if you engage in combat with one of these types of monsters, don't kill them right away. Instead, equip a health regen necklace and try to stay alive fighting them as long as possible while keeping them alive as well. If the monster attacks, either swat it back, block it, or hit it with a spell if none of your healing skills are ready yet. After that, you can begin alternating between Absorb and Adrenaline Dodge, while again, blocking or swatting them back. And in no time, you'll have your health back. The trick here is to try and separate the mob, so you only have to fight one at a time. The more of them that you have, and the longer you keep them alive without taking too much damage, the more health you can recover. So there you have it. Do as many runs as you can. After about three to four floors, you should already have a nice gold chest ready to go. And just like I mentioned in my other Abyss gold chest grind video, simply exit the dungeon, repair your gear, and go back to keep farming. Don't worry if you can't get it right away. Find what works best for your playstyle. If you need to craft another piece of armor with resistance to that element you keep dying to, that's okay too. Sometimes one piece of elemental resistance just isn't enough. So keep playing around with it and come up with your own build to suit your style. My name is Arius and I play games. Cheers!